Good evening. This is the Elliott Wave update for the NASDAQ 100 and the S&P 500 for Tuesday, April the 30th, 2024. Uh, well, we did get earnings today. We got them in uh, Super Microcomputer. We got them in Amazon, AMD, and Starbucks, actually. Really disappointed and came flying back down. The ones that I watched were Super uh, Microcomputer, AMD, and Amazon. Supermarket computer as also then it affected NVIDIA. So it gets real interesting now. I just, I'm going to start there before I actually get into the NASDAQ. It was an interesting little ride. This is supermarket computer. This is NVIDIA. This is after the close. So we went running. So we, we actually initially, they dropped it. So I was wondering who came out and they got it down to uh, 835. And then from there, they ran it up almost 100 bucks. Actually, more than 100 bucks. The high was 940. Then they ran, and this is a minute. These are minute bars. One minute, two minutes. So in two minutes, 100 bucks. Then start to drop it, drop it, drop it. And where did they bring it back down to? With a low of 796, 797. So it's like, wait a minute. There's another over 100 point drop and kind of plop around, bring it back down again towards the end of the extra hour session, reaching a low at 777, rally up off of that, run it back up to 800, now bringing it back down. It's, it's insane. Here's NVIDIA where we get that first oh slam it down oh run it up and this was all a five minute bar the low 856 the high 883 they're now pushing this to new to new lows now that the extra hour session is gone now being pushed to gotten as low as 850 bouncing a little bit off of that now Here's the NASDAQ. Market for the most part looked like, okay, it could have finished the, forget this count, let me just pay attention for a second and go, because I'm gonna do both. Version A, version B. What I'm showing is version A, and that the four goes in place. Version B would suggest this is wave one, minute wave one of minor wave five expectations would be that it goes breaks above that high keeps going ends up as i showed you yesterday somewhere on 19,100 200 somewhere in there can that still be a lie yeah it could we have apple we have um apple <laughs> so that's what we got left and plus we got the fed what to worry and we have nvidia mid may sure it could happen, but then what actually is kind of coming through is version A, which is suggesting that the highs are in, and it's one, two, three, and we had a four, albeit higher than I would have expected, higher than even Elliot would have expected, but it did not break the rule. And the rule is, is that wave four can not overlap wave one. Wave one bottomed at 18,072. Wave four actually topped at 17,949. So it still had room. And then it just started to keel over. So under this count, what would the expectation be? Well, we kind of maybe bounce a little bit. If this, is this one of five or one, two, three, and a four and a five? Are we going to, you know, how is this all going to play out? We'll see if I bring this down and we take a quick look on the hourly chart and we open it up. Kind of, is that a one, two, one, two? Hmm, I don't know. That has definitely looked like it could have been a five inside of it. That's for sure three. And I don't oh, know, what is this? But so that's why I could, okay, could be just, you know, 
a small four and we go up, right? A, B, C, four, we go up, failed. And then just play, then play, and then started to head lower. So and it was really after the earnings, right? Here, here we go. That's the close. Kind of run it up and they run it down. So, but it was moving lower all most of the day. So how would we gonna count this? Again, if indeed minute wave four, we're looking for minute wave five, it's gonna have five waves of minuet degree. I'd have to somewhere figure this a one, two, and now we're in a third. And this is kind of overnight, but that's one, two, one, two, or one, two, three, four, five, one of three. One, two, two, three, four, five, three. One, two, and then we come back down. One, two, three, four, five of three, four, five of three, four, five. And it comes out and likely goes below 17,133. Now, what else can I look at that maybe is going to tell me that we can go further? The first thing we want to do is we're going to add these fibs. That is going to give us another little bit of information. Again, pretty high, but here we go. Now, 100%, 1.618, 16,891. Everything else falls within not putting in a new low below 17,133. 100% of 17,295. It's gonna maybe be support, but then whole shebang, five, get us down to probably 16,891. And then guess what? That would be minor wave one of this new primary C wave coming right off of that high. Minor wave one. Then you get three waves up. And we still get another rally. And we get another bigger because it'll be a minor degree rally. A minor wave two. So if this is going to be one, there's the high. There would be the low. The low high of, of the start of wave one, the completion point of one, one, possibly and then we do another one in between. So we continue to rally in this while everything else works its way out. Apple reports, the Fed, blah, blah, et cetera. You know, maybe Apple is going to disappoint and that'll drive the market down, but then they'll kind of bring it back up. And maybe NVIDIA then reports and that gives us a good boost. And then it all kind of something else happens. So it just, it, I think that I'm not going to try to put fundamentals or geopolitical situations around what the market can do. But I'm going to say technically, technically, both are still alive. Technically, the market could turn from here and just they pile back in tomorrow. I mean, pile back in tomorrow as if the world depends on it. Now, I also want to share a little bit with you guys in something else that it it, it truly is kind of fascinating to me because I um, I I um, am looking at this as if oh, sorry my train of thought I was looking up something else and what I look at this is to what the expirations coming up are and what I'm checking out and looking at is just the size of these expirations that are coming up basically in the queues, right? NASDAQ queues. So I had that before. I want to come back down to here. We are. I want to go look at the queues and we're looking at expiration concentrations. And what we have, we have the May 17, right? That's our next monthly expiration. And that one combined right now, right now, is is about, I'm going to say, $17, $18 billion. Then there is the June expiration, which right now, all right, is, a pro and I'm just, this is just a guesstimate, about $27 billion. That's June over May. I'm like, holy cow. There's a lot of money coming due or going to change hands in June. 
unless between now and June even, right? That's how much money is out there. So that's kind of what I'm talking about is that the money flow is still huge. And that's going to produce a lot of trade. So I believe, yes, I think the market can come down, finish it, put a minor wave one in here, rally strongly in a minor second wave, hold below that high. I'm not looking for, I would not be looking for a new high if this comes down, put in a minor one. We could still rally, but we're going to hang out in between. And that's saying that maybe we we don't go past 16,891. We most certainly can. We have 16,767 and then 16,240. Those are possible as well. Now, the earnings that now came out today can, are a little bit conflicting because what I want to add to this, what I will add, Microsoft, which earnings were good. They weren't bad. Strong, strength, great product, everything all in alignment. Stock was down almost $13 today. Back below now, the lows from the earnings. Right? Meta, we already saw them on when they reported had gone down to like 400. Now they're back around. They got back around 440, 450. Now coming, toning it down a little bit, coming it back into line down to the downside. Google, 175. Now 162, 83, 163. Things settle. So they get back in alignment. AMD right now, which did report did report this afternoon, closed at 158, which was down, now trading 146 to 147. So again, if you're going to factor that in, that is what's going to affect our market. And it, what does that tell us? It's like, well, should we really just be hanging our hat and our hopes and our dreams on NVIDIA, on Apple? on the Fed? Or do we take it in stride and like, okay, nothing's really changing. So what were we expecting? Now, again, I want to say, can the markets turn and run higher? Yeah, they can. I swear they can. And they could just do it on the hope, women, a prayer that, that Jerome Powell's going to speak, you know, whatever. Tell us that everything is great, fine, and we're all on track. And don't you worry and see, I'm all relaxed. You should be too. I don't know. But I am saying that I believe that we may have turned the corner. I'm not breaking any rules. I'm now putting back up. I'm not changing because I trade both. But I am saying this one likely is now appearing that it could fall down and therefore invalidate the other. That's kind of the point. Remember yesterday I was showing you and I said like, okay, the B version could invalidate the A version, which is this one that I'm showing here on the chart. And today, had it gone up and gotten past that level? Well, if it's supposed to be one, and this is a two, if it breaks 17,113, you're going to hear people say, well, no, it could still be this. And it's like, but it's going to be more in line that the highs are in. There's one count that, that uh, I believe Sasha has, and he does the trade room with me, where it would that there's a larger three completing and that it's a larger four. We still have fifth wave to come. But I think, you know, even that, when you start breaking 17,000, really begins to put a lot of pressure on holding to, to an upside. So, again, we, we've got a lot that's beginning to, to show us that the highs might be in and we are going to head lower, regardless of what the narrative and the swirl begins to think about NVIDIA, SMCI, Tesla. The other one, Tesla, 198. Well, Tesla, 181 this afternoon. 181. Hmm. What a difference a day makes, right? So what was yesterday? 
It was a big whirlwind of money changing hands. Those that needed to sell got it up to where they were happy. And those who were buying it were like, well, probably just as happy. I don't know. But again, big money changing hands. So seeing this happen doesn't is not surprising. So for tomorrow, let me just double check to make sure because of course we do have as well, we do have some economic data on Wednesday, we have the ADP employment. I'm no mind you to today. What started us off was the employment cost index. They didn't like it, boom. And that set the tone for the balance of the day. I remember I said said yesterday when I was telling you what's what's coming this week, I said it's employment week. All of the data, the big, big important data is surrounding employment numbers, employment data. So today was employment cost index. Tomorrow's ADP employment. And then we have job openings as well. So ADP employment at 8.15 a.m. Then we have construction spending at 10, ISM manufacturing at 10 a.m., and job openings at 10 a.m. And then at 2 p.m., we have the interest rate decision, which is pretty much commonly now accepted that it'll be unchanged again. So the surprise would be anything off of unchanged. Um. And then at 2.30 p.m., uh, Fed Chair Powell does his press conference. So it is kind of a, a bigger day. but And it's kind of swamps any, anybody that's coming out with uh, earnings, possibly. Uh, but again, so that's the NASDAQ. How are moving averages? Well, look what happens. The, the 200 still sits up top, which kind of, also goes along with we're going down. And then the 13 and the 20 went, hmm, okay. And they turned and turned hard. And so did the 50. When they get back below the 13 and the 20, get back below the 50, then it's in alignment. You have the 200, the 50, the 20, the 13, and we likely will head lower. Okay, remember here is, and I'm going to take this off for right now because it only had meaning with that 17,432 there. If I take it off, now we've got downside projections going on. And so we have, we surpassed 17,545 and we're heading towards 17,295. We'll see what happens. They're continuing to smack a lot of these stocks. And then eventually we have some additional support right there, 305-ish, I guess. And then we have some price support coming in here. And then, of course, that low at 17,000, uh, sorry, 120, 17,113. And a break there. I mean, the support all the way down to 17,100, of course. And, but that would be one ticket. The next ticket is right there, which, by the way, if I take it out, I believe that's wave one, minor wave one. Top's right there. So if this is going to come off, a wave four cannot break wave one, right? So let me just confirm that. Wave one. Nah, it is. Actually, it's 236 of a much larger move in wave one is right down there at 646. But if it breaks that, it's kind of, kind of getting a little bit sketchy that it's going to go down and break wave one, but it wouldn't have yet. And if I'm not allowing it for the upside, uh, I mean, for the downside count, I have to allow it for the upside count as well. Now, I'm going to finish this up. Let's go over and take a look at the S&P. S&P sitting right down on the old trend line, and that's pretty much right where it closed. Now, it's kind of the same thing. In fact, I want to just go look. We have those expirations. Let me just take a look uh, real quickly over to see on the spiders about the, the expirations, the expiration concentrations. So what we have on May the 17th is about 27 billion. On June, oh, it's upwards about 39, 39 billion. So June is the bigger month. June is a huge month 
for both spiders and the cues. A lot of money. So I think a lot will happen in between all of that. Let's take a look at the S&P. S&P as well. I have moved it. Oops. I go back out to my four hour chart. I've left that three there because it's like it hasn't been taken out, but I am getting it out of the way and we're coming down. So what I've changed it back also to, this is not minor four. If it is, if it is folks, right? We didn't break any rules. Same deals that is in the NASDAQ. It did not break the rule. So wave four could be here. Had it broken that rule, then it wouldn't be, it'd be wave one. So in any case, it hasn't actually broken the rule on the way down either. It's just surpassed, getting getting a little bit past 50% retracement. If indeed this is one and this is going to be a two, and it would be a minute two. So we come down and now we're, that's A, B, or is this A, B? I don't know. I'm going to see it's this way. And this is maybe a third, a four, and a five. And then maybe there's that one. Who knows? Now, if I take this off, this would be for wave two. We're starting to get down there. And again, we're going to start playing around with, and I know you guys don't like it when I do it, but there's a put wall. It's still at five, in the SPX at 5,000. It's still going to hold where there should be support. If you break it, we get another quick round of selling and last time it drove the market down to 49.63 in in the sp and the uh, s p and the spx it drove it a little bit further now if i take this off and then we're going to put the correct one on because that was for the upside this is for the upside and i'm going to take that off as well and now i'm going to go back out go over to the and i can just go out of my four hour chart should be able to get there and open it back up. And I want to get to capture this wave one because it could really produce a hub dinger for oh something on that. Excuse me. I can just come down here and I just want to go this way. Sorry. I was gonna I was thinking the wrong thing. I go to there and then over to here and now coming down so we can see that we're still inside we need to you know wave five should break below 4960 so we're coming into 1.618 where wave minute wave five would be 1.618 times the length of minute wave one not uncommon at 4926 that would put in the new low and then that could it could put in minor wave one and this would then change so it would be one, two, three, four, five, minor wave one, and we still get a uh, minor second wave. And the high is 533, right? 5,333. That would be the high, and then wherever the low gets put in, the wave two would kind of figure itself out in between the two. So bottom line, what I'm really trying to say here is I either count, either we're going to go up and we're going to make a new high of, of close 5,300, or we come down, make a new seasonal low so to speak you know like just around 4900 maybe even a low 4800 we can go down to 4785 for sure we can go there and then we put in so there's the range and that range then probably takes us out through june june july and uh before we go wave two and then we get the next we get the next move so Right now, I'd kind of be looking for uh, uh, oh, what the hour down, and I'm going to open this up, see what we got going on. See, the same kind of thing, A, B, C. So strange. So it is a one, two, one, one, two. It's very bizarre. And then we come back down. One, two, three, four, five, three, four, five, three, four, five. So it got, it's, it is going. Can the market turn around? Yes, it can. But I'm going to tell you, same thing has to happen here as it happened, would happen in the NASDAQ. It has to go from here and just go. Same way it came down. Boom, boom, boom. Like right there. It's got to turn and go. Could it do it? Yes. 
they could reverse this whole dispersion stuff and do it all over again tomorrow and just sell the VIX. Sell the VIX. And, you know, buy all of this underlying volatility again. Um, stranger things. But right now, but right now, I am going to, let's see what it does. And if it's going to come in here, it should do it pretty much just as quick, at least back below that level, and then back below the low thus far that we've had at 49.62. All right, moving averages. Let's go back out to the four-hour chart, and let's take a look inside. Moving averages, we got the 200 up here, actually turned down, turned down, nasty. And then we got the 50 turning lower, but we got the 20 and the 13 joining forces and pushing to get below that 50. And then now we're in alignment to go down again. All right. So once again, I gave all the numbers and we do have some, uh, I'm sure there are earnings reports that come up tomorrow. And um, Apple is on Tuesday. Tomorrow's Fed Day. Next update will be on Wednesday, May the 1st.